this girl, thank you guys for watching Indiana Jones and Dollar Destiny. The fifth and supposed final Indiana Jones movie. Here's something I probably need to tell you guys. I had never seen Indiana Jones. I know, I know, I know, I know. Hate me all you want. I was familiar with the character, you know, the music, and some of the scenes from the movies, like, you know, the Harvard Queen scene, or the, you know, like, Lost Ark ending scene, or the aliens from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But I never actually seen Indiana Jones movies from start to finish. And with the fifth and, as I said, final Indiana Jones movie, I thought, like, okay, I guess that was a good time as any. I watched them, and I think they're really good. I think they're honestly great, except for Crystal Skull, which is, I think, it's actually still good. I think that film is a little bit underrated. Like, it does not deserve the hate it gets. And Dollar Destiny, it's honestly really good. I think it's better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Not as good as the original trilogy, but I think it is better than Crystal Skull. I do really just have one problem with this movie. We'll get into that in a bit. And some people will probably say this is another jumping the sharp month for the Indiana Jones franchise. They do something pretty crazy in this movie. Maybe even crazier than the aliens and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but honestly, I liked it better. I thought it was handled better. I think it just makes more sense for the Indiana Jones universe than aliens. Even though it's way more crazier than aliens ever could be. I think, maybe. It all depends how you look at it. One major complaint about this film, throughout a lot of the movie, they treat Indy as, well, an old man, which he is, but you don't treat Indy as like an old man. Same problem I had with Halloween Ends. They treat Michael Myers as kind of like a joke, and Indy, not as much like in Halloween Ends with Michael, but definitely there are some, oh yeah, because the one scene Indiana Jones literally goes, turn that music down, kids, that, that literally happens in the movie, and I was just thinking, could you not do that with Indiana Jones and the most iconic characters put on the silver screen, please? Like, that'd be nice. But they don't dwell on it too much. By the middle of the movie, they kind of just get past that completely. And I, so I didn't really mind it that much. But so every time I watch that, like, first, like, just half of the movie, I'm going to be like, oh, could you just stop, like, dissing Indiana Jones like this? First of all, does the actual artifact that they are looking for work? Because that's one of the most important things about the Indiana Jones movie. Is the artifact worth it? Does it make the movie? King of the Crystal Skull? That's what kind of ruined that movie. The stones in Temple of Doom make the movie work. The Ark and Raiders of the Lost Ark make it work. And the Dial and Dial Destiny makes it work. There's so many nice new characters in the movie and there are nice returning characters. One important thing that everyone was worried about this film, and yeah, Jones actually does do stuff. He's not just on the adventure. He solves puzzles, so he's in the action, but it's never too much where you don't think, okay, Indiana Jones at like 80 years old could not do that. It's it's, it's believable for the most part. And D.H. Harrison Ford, I think might be some of the best D.H. I've actually ever seen. It looks pretty good. It doesn't look great in every single shot. Some shots are a little bit wonky with like the, you know, the, like, you know, the matching, like, the lips, you know, and the words. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. Also, Antonio Banderas in this movie, which is the voice actor of Puss in Boots. Also, the action is pretty good. But one thing this movie can honestly use a lot more of, and, like, honestly, I feel like we shouldn't be saying this, but I feel like it just, Spielberg should have been the director again. Those first four Indiana Jones just had such a feel to them. I feel like, while it still has the Indiana Jones feel to it, I feel like a little bit of that is taken away. Most of the action scenes feel like they could just be in any action movie, not particularly just, like, they could just be in Indiana Jones. Like, like Indiana Jones, like, a lot of the action, especially in the first three movies, like, you feel like they could only be in Indiana Jones. The action in this film, like, it's Indiana Jones, but it doesn't feel like it could just be with Indiana Jones. Nice references to all four films. I honestly, one of them is really emotional with the Lost Ark. Like, it's at the end, honestly, that... Almost like made me cry. I was like, that was like really like an emotional. It was a reference, but it's done so well. My biggest complaint with this one is that it's been advertised and teased as like you know the final adventure for Indiana Jones. It did say it's gonna be the final one, but they've said that with a lot of their franchises, <laughs> Toy Story. So you know, I wouldn't take their word for that really. But I feel like it could be the last one. But this one is supposed to be a one big final adventure, one triumph for Indiana Jones. You kind of end on the franchise with an epic grand adventure, and it is a, it is an epic adventure. But the way it ends, honestly, it, it leaves it open for many more Indiana Jones movies. Like, this like doesn't feel like the last adventure. It feels like it's just another adventure. But now we're going to do some spoilers. So if you don't be spoiled, I would click off the video. Like, click, 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 click. We'll click off. And, yeah, in this film, is about time travel. They time travel. They go back in time. And, like, it's ridiculous, yes. But, like, it's not that ridiculous. The way they explain it makes sense. I like it. It just, they just made it better than how they did the aliens in the last film. So I thought it's just, it's such more of a more crazier idea than the aliens. But I feel like it just, it does work better. I feel like they did make it work better than that. And also in this film, they reveal Indiana Jones' son that would introduce in the clean with the Crystal Skull, but is dead. And I know not everyone loves that character. I'm not even a big fan of that character. And honestly, the fact that he was dead didn't like, Give me emotional. But Indiana Jones's reaction to that is what got me. Yeah, I didn't cry, but that I was like, oh.
But also you're able to have Marianne, you know, the girl who he married at the end of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, divorce him after a month's death. That was really sad, you know, the relationship's really believable. And in the end, she she does return, makes a comeback. And as I said, the difference is like the first film, like, you know, it doesn't hurt here, you know, like that, you know, and just like that was like, that was nice. So what can I say? Indiana Jones All Destiny is really good. If you're a fan of old Andy, I recommend you check it out. And of course, look, what do you guys think about Indiana Jones All Destiny? If you haven't seen it, comment on this video. Once you have seen it, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about it. But I guess for now, bye bye, Scarlet Packer. Oh yeah, I guess I forgot to mention the villains. They're um, the Indiana Jones franchise has never been really good doing villains. So they're um, they're not bad, but you know they're just kind of forgettable. Like every villain in the franchise, in my opinion.